Some people are getting very emotional when speaking about music competitions, saying, for example, that they are for horses, not for musicians. First prize and gold medal goes to... But in my opinion, everything is a tool and competitions, as any other tool for career development, have their pros and cons. And in the recent years, I actually felt some respect to music competitions because they help us to maintain relatively high industry standards. I'm very grateful to YouTube for the opportunity to reach out to you directly, my dear piano enthusiasts. But let's be honest, in order to be successful on social media, you don't have to be a great pianist. You can compensate with a clickbaity thumbnail, with a brilliant sense of humor, all the things I don't have. Or, for example, playing piano next to some wild animals, or even... Let's stop there, probably. So, for those of you who wonder what it takes to win a serious music competition, here are my tips based on many competitions that I won, so you can use my knowledge, and many competitions that I lost, so you can avoid my mistakes. The most annoying thing about music competitions is that you have to terribly over-practice your pieces. When learning a piece, it takes only 10% of, uh, of the time to master it from 0 to 50% of quality. But it takes 70% or so of the time to polish it from 95 to 99.99% .99 of perfection. Because at a serious music competition with a prize cap around $100,000 or so, you will surely have at least a few pianists who will play with 99% perfection. And you have to still overbeat them somehow. So this might be considered as a downside, actually. But to win competitions, you really have to limit your repertoire for the sake of perfection. As a result, we have a whole generation of pianists who played the same program for 15 years, going from one competition to another with the same program over and over again. However, this strategy really works. I lost so many competitions being in the semifinals of the Queen Elizabeth competition, of Tel Aviv uh, competition, of Geza Ande competition in Switzerland, which is a little bit less famous than those are, but it's even more difficult, and many others, simply because I was so bored to death to play the same pieces over and over again. So I would constantly learn something new and take my chances. And very often I got lucky with the new pieces. But when a piece is really fresh, a fever or a sleepless night or any kind of frustration is enough to reduce your technical perfection to, let's say, 97% and your charisma and your energy levels to all the way to your 80%, let's say. This is still fine for a recital. It's okay for a concert, but for a competition on such a high level, it's simply not good enough. On the other hand, for the sake of holistic education and repertoire growth, doing too many competitions might not be a great idea. Especially I don't support when children are trained to play well a small amount of challenging pieces, and then they are just showcased on all possible competitions with the same program instead of covering basic gaps in music education. And I constantly deal with students who can play one or two Liszt or Chopin etudes well, but don't understand even the basics of music theory. Never underestimate yourself. When I was 16, I went to my first adult competition in Tbilisi, Georgia, with just one age category from 16 to 32 years. I was the youngest participant, basically competing against many pianists almost twice as old and much more experienced than me. So obviously I had doubts in myself, considering that this was rather a tryout competition rather than intending to win. So I prepared three rounds of this competition, two hours of piano solo music in total, and I didn't repeat the final round, Rachmaninoff's second concerto. However, I managed to play at my best somehow, and in the second round I even won a special prize for the best performance of a classical sonata, which was actually a freshly learned Waldstein sonata by Beethoven. And I knew that my third round 
was the strongest. I knew I would epically and easily tear apart that piano with Mussorgsky pictures from the exhibition and Prokofiev's seventh sonata. And it was indeed a great success and I had a fantastic reception and Georgian audience, Georgian people, you're the best. <laughs> And although I managed to repeat the concerto during just a few days of a competition, and technically it was a good performance, I remember there was just one passage that didn't go well where I played a bunch of wrong notes, this one. So since then, of course, I made sure that I can play it even in my sleep. But musically, it was not so great because I was so stressed, so I was so tense. So I got only the fourth prize. And if you think that this was some kind of an easy competition, it wasn't. It was a very strong year. The Grand Prix of the competition was won by a Russian guy who kind of disappeared afterwards, but he played amazingly well. The first prize went to a fantastic Georgian pianist, Tamar Beraya, who played fantastically well the Hammerklavier Sonata by Beethoven being only 17 years old. And the mega-famous Katya Buonitishvili, whom you surely know, got only the second prize on that competition. And this is actually a very weird thing about music competitions, because you surely know like the Clyburn competition and Chopin competition in Warsaw, and maybe a couple of other competitions. But actually, there are hundreds of competitions, and even some small competition in some Italian province with a prize cap of like three or four thousand dollars might attract mega pianists, like really great pianists. Like, for example, once I did a competition in Trieste. I don't even remember the name of this competition, but I got only the second prize there. The first prize was won by a Russian guy who then won the Tchaikovsky competition. So in the next few years, I made it a rule to prepare the first and the last round of a competition first, making sure that, the, that my finals is as robust as my first round. This paid off on the Maria Canals competition where I managed to play my first round best of all 60 participants, having a huge lead in points, which basically propelled me all the way to the final. And in the fourth round, there was one woman who actually managed to surpass me slightly. So I got to the final round being number two by points and already said bon voyage to my first prize. But she didn't have the stamina to perform her best in the finals. She made some mistakes and a weaker impression. But my final round with the first Chopin concerto, which I play since I'm 14 maybe, and which I played with the orchestra so many times, it was so robust and so well prepared that even despite two weeks of a huge stress, poor sleep because of that stress, and some other factors uh, where I have to admit alcohol and nicotine were involved. But despite all that, I played my absolute best and I could tear away that first prize from everyone. So in your practicing, learn the final concerto as good as you learn your fugue and etudes from the first round. With regard to the winner's mindset, you can think of jury members as of dogs. They will feel your fear. Many participants fool themselves into a false modesty thinking like, I'll do my best, but who knows how it goes. And it's not about the first prize anyway. If you don't care about the first prize, go play for your grandma. She will admire you no matter how crappy your self-confidence levels are. But to win a competition, it's not enough to just play very well. You have to genuinely believe that you deserve that first prize. You have to give yourself a permission to win over all those fantastically gifted and well-prepared people who practice in the next rooms, next practice rooms and sound so scarily great. Then, if you truly believe that you are the first prize winner, your self-presentation, your charisma, your body language will be on an entirely different level. So if you want to build a career by winning competitions, psychological work is as important as your wild practicing. I lost some competitions despite being brilliantly prepared solely because I didn't understand the huge difference how your headspace shapes your self-presentation and artistic outcome. And even if the jury doesn't appreciate your interpretation, 
you can get some other perks. For example, on the high-end competition in Spain, I won only the third prize with the Schumann's Concerto, but I got a public award. And this was actually a very dramatic point in my life because I got hand overuse issues for the first time in my life. I still was very ignorant and I didn't know anything about efficiency. So two hours before the finals, I tried to warm up through pain and understood that I can't play even a simple scale. Luckily, women from the administration learning about my arm pains brought me some cream with a cooling effect. Uh, as I learned later actually, and this is something you have to keep in mind, it is very dangerous to uh, use such a cream, such a cooling cream to calm down the pain and go perform because you can actually worsen your condition. But I was ignorant and it was so unthinkable to opt out uh, after a few months of preparations. So I thought, whatever, I will play like the last time in my life. And yes, the jury members assigned me only the third prize, but emotionally I went all in and I got the public award. It's better to play easier pieces, but to play them brilliantly. It seems very evident, but I constantly deal with students who take very ambitious pieces, which they can't play brilliantly. This never works on a competition. Make many run-throughs, no matter how long you play your pieces, but you have to organize at least a few public events, one or two months before a competition and perform all of your pieces multiple times, listening to the recording, of course, and improving based on what you hear from the side. Find the best teachers, but be yourself. The toughest part of preparing to a competition is that you do them when you are young and stupid. Most participants who compete while being 20 or 22 years old, they have to rely heavily on their teachers to polish every note of a piece. And one pianist who actually won a huge competition in Canada with the first prize of $100,000. So that's a great achievement actually. And that's a very powerful start of a career. But this pianist proudly told me once that when preparing to a competition, he didn't decide on any note. He solely did everything his teacher said him. So the danger here is to forget what you want. What is your creative potential looks like being solely an executor of your teacher's wishes? When I won the Maria Canals competition when being 21 years old, it was the same year I did the Chopin competition, I already had a rule for a few years that I would take no more than one lesson per month and I would show up for a lesson only when I did with a piece everything I possibly could. So my goal was to come to the first lesson with a new piece, being as ready as I would be ready for a concert. I strived to be independent and by bringing pieces to a lesson in a very solid state, a teacher would help me to go beyond what I was capable of thinking about, instead of telling me things which I knew but didn't get ready yet. And now, after giving lessons to countless conservatory students who learn pieces by memory at the last moment and show up to a lesson almost sight reading sometimes, I understand what a great student I actually was and why it was so easy for me to study with any teachers I wanted. So a competition prize is actually only a cherry on top of your overall professional attitude toward your musical development. Winning a competition is very tough, but sometimes it's not even necessary. For example, in, after the Chopin competition I did in 2010, where I was among top three participants after the first round, so I performed really well the first round, but in the second round I lost my charisma and my confidence for many reasons, and I lost my points and I didn't advance further, and nevertheless, I was noticed by the leading Polish manager, and even this year, uh, I played with the orchestra in Poland, thanks to those contacts that I made in 2010. Competitions are not perfect, they have many cons, and they don't always advance your career, even if you win them. Once I won a second prize on a big competition in Helsinki, in Finland, being only one vote behind the first prize winner. I got $20,000 for the second prize, but I didn't get 
any concert invitation whatsoever. So this is a very mixed feeling situation. Last time I felt like that when a girl I liked told me, Dennis, I love you so much as a friend. Or for example, one fellow pianist after winning the Arthur Rubinstein competition in Tel Aviv proudly wrote on Facebook, I am so happy to be done with competitions. From now on, I will only play concerts. But unfortunately, even if you win such a big competition that includes a huge promotional package, it usually works for a few years until we get a winner of the next edition of the same competition. So after a few years, I started seeing him doing some third level competitions, which should feel quite humiliating actually. But this is our reality and this also happened to me. So I got dozens of concerts after the Maria Canals competition, for example. I played with so many orchestras and in so many big halls. But this is a yearly competition. Every year they have the next first prize winner. So no matter how greatly you play on a given concert, next year they will invite just the next guy. And of course, competitions are not for everyone. And some artists who are incapable of winning a serious competition nevertheless have a brilliant career using other qualities and developing other sides of their personality. And nevertheless, I think that for most ambitious and most gifted students, some competitions sometimes is a great tool because they discipline you like nothing else. The boy will be disciplined and disciplined severely. Good day. And it's a very democratic way to present yourself on a great stage, whether you are from a very fancy influential family or from a third world province like myself. If you are preparing for serious competitions or exams, you can contact me following the link in the description for an online lesson. Please let me know what you think about music competitions. Do you think it's a good tool for career development? Do you think it has sense or not? I will be happy to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching this and see you next time.